I created the seven word system as a kind of a vernacular version of how to understand the seven planes of consciousness. So um, no represents the fact that in the earth dimension, two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. So the fundamental mystery of the earth plane is no, I'm here, you can't come here. You know, so um, I'm just going through the, the relationship between the seven planes of consciousness and the seven word system. Um, so the word no relates to the earth plane, physicality, you can't come here because I'm here. The second plane, the plane of the, the mind, the astral plane, is where we go when we go to sleep and we dream and, and what, what we're creating out of our thought forms. And so there's there's no feeling associated that. This is all mind, all this, this level of mind, thinking mind. And um, so that's the astral plane. It's emotionless, it's, it's clever, it's the place of genius it's also the place of nightmares and and obsessions and confusions it, it, it's got the the highest and the lowest things that you can do with your mind the uh, third plane is called the plane of love harmony and beauty and, and this is where we start to engage the heart but only on a relatively um not shallow level but it's 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 deeper than the mind but we we do actually have here to struggle to overcome sentimentality. A lot of people say love and they don't really mean that word. You know, um, uh, it's very popular in America at the end of a phone call to say, I uh, love you and put down the phone, you know, and it's, it's not what I call love. It's, it's, but that kind of fondness, that, that thing that just about touches your heart and, and, and you can deepen it to, to the level of family and, and loved ones, it, it can actually stretch to what people genuinely called love and familiarity on that level. But it's, um, it's rather conditional. You know, you tend to love people who love you back and, and, and it's beautiful and it's pretty and it's rather naive and so on. So that relates to um, the word thank you. It's what we value and appreciate and so on. And, and, and I'll actually in, include some of this explanation in, in um, and what we're going to go through now. So, um, the idea of calling this teaching path to happiness is self evident. I, I think it is necessary for us to master <laughs> these seven different aspects of life. And we begin with the earth plane. If we don't become able to develop strength, then our life is simply one of putting up with something that we don't want. And that ability that we have to continue in life when actually we're not getting what we want, that, that is a strong ability, but it's not a spiritual principle. Um, we need to be strong enough to guard our boundaries and make sure that we are in control of our own space. So if you think about that now, and you, you think about how strongly you defend your boundaries, you know, are, are you imposed upon? Are you somebody who can actually say no to what it is you don't want? Or, or do you feel sometimes that somebody's taking advantage of you and you're not, you're not really getting the, the clarity that you need to, to be who you are? Because if you're invaded, if you're intruded upon by external energies, then there is a measure of compromise in your identity. And identity is the second keyword for the word no. It's only by establishing clear, strong boundaries that we can become clear and strong in our personal identity. This is who I am. I say yes to this and no to that, and, and that defines where I am. 
and I can express my identity through the choices I make. And this is the authentic statement of who I am. So, you know, just think about that. How are you with that? I mean, are you expressing yourself clearly, authentically, making choices that are genuinely yours to make? and not taking on somebody else's choices because you have not the strength to maintain your own. So this is all the first plane, the earth plane mystery. Do you want someone to speak to that? I was waiting to see what happened, to see whether we're actually moving into meditation or conversation. Um, and uh, to see whether I'm going to be sitting with people who are sitting still or whether people are moving around. That's what I'm doing. And we haven't settled yet. So if we do move into um, the next level of spiritual understanding we enter this rather tricky plane called the astral plane pure mind no heart it's it would be very difficult indeed to live in that world the world without love that would be the world that they enjoy in 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 wall street and and they you know, this sharpness of mind, this ruthlessness, that's a part of the astral plane experience, that cleverness and um, lack of compassion, lack of empathy, that, that's present on the astral plane. But what is also present is a sense of genius, being able to understand what needs to be done so that could be technological, you could fix things. And that's a real form of intelligence. You know, we, we are the species that we are because we have access to this ability to make things work and to overcome problems with our high level of dexterity. And, and that makes us think. And the, the mind is, is a work of art. It's, it's an incredible work of art. And um, we have been able to develop with the human mind the concept of the Big Bang Theory, for example. I mean, just imagine what the human mind can do if it can, can come up with a cosmology of that degree of complexity. And it checks out, you know, and that there are 11 dimensions and there are subatomic particles of all manner of different levels and you know what a clever species we are you know we may not be wise and i, I think generally we, we lack wisdom but we we are clever and and this is a spiritual principle and each of us um would find it rather more difficult to move into heightened states of of being without that dimension of mind However, the mind is a, a rather dangerous thing and it can conjure up unicorns and it can conjure up dragons and monsters and, and fearful things as well. As, as much as we can in the dream state at night have nightmares. A lot of people actually have nightmares when they're awake. You know, their, their life is surrounded by horribleness and danger and, and violence and so on and they, they see themselves as subject to that energy whereas a Sufi teaching would 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 change that around and would say well look that's actually what's going on in their minds and the outpourings of that would be the difficult circumstances of their lives and in other words, if you have something in your life that you, you really don't like, then to work with the mind is the thing to do, to become clear-minded. And you'll notice that there is a greater stillness within the group. 
there's a focus of attention within the group. We're on a higher spiritual level now. And this is partly because of the qualities contained within the key words associated with the word hello in the seven word system. And these qualities begin with attention. The concepts that I'm introducing require a greater de degree of concentration. And so your attention is stronger, clearer, and there's an openness developing of, of ideas. And, and, and that represents an exchange of energy as I can feel the willingness that you have to listen to me then I, I can relax into that. And so the tone of my voice represents that more relaxed state. You will perhaps have noticed that the tone of my voice is less demanding than it was when I was discussing the earth plane. And I'm moving into the higher levels of the astral because I've, I've won your gentle attention. And I can risk periods of silence without the fear of being interrupted. You know, so this is a spiritual principle. This is the astral plane wisdom. And if you take this to the highest level, that would be communion, what we're calling com communion, when we can sort of really tune in to another person. And I, I, I can actually read shifts in your comprehension. Uh, it is something I've kind of noticed that something has arisen within me that somebody suddenly understands something on a deeper level. I, I, I notice a shift in their energy field, you know, and I'm not by any means the only one that does that. I noticed other people can do that. And so we find now that there's a sense of group consciousness starting to, to develop, you know, where rather more interested in where the group is going than any individual and than ourselves. And, and this is the stepping stone towards the plane of love, plane of love, harmony, and beauty. And on this plane, the, the heart starts to, to become involved. This is a very much softer reality. This is pastel colors, soft voices. It's the beginning of the angelic planes, what are called the angelic planes, when we, we're really moving away from a sense of fearfulness, scarcity, and being in danger. And we're starting to know that we're, we're being taken care of by some angelic realm the guardian angel principle perhaps and we appreciate this mood you know if we actually are surrounded by people that are in in heart focus then it's safe so a kindergarten teacher would you'd expect her to to dress in pastel colors and speak softly to the children and, and forgive them their naughtiness and, and we'd all remember our kindergarten teacher for, for our lifetime because she was a better mum than our mum <laughs> you know totally forgiving and, and soft and a, a giving you'd, you'd, you'd feel a radiant energy from somebody who's tuning into this third plane and in the seven words terms, we would call this thanks, thank you. It begins with appreciation. We appreciate life and we get up in the morning and we, oh yeah, you know, I, I'm alive and I've got a day, another day and I can breathe and enjoy my body and oh, I have some food to eat for breakfast. You know, lovely. And, and you, you just appreciate everything. You know, and, and you'd want to give, you'd want to share that. It, it wouldn't be something you had to decide to do. You just want to do it. it. It would be what you did. You'd be giving. And that would create a mood of, of trust and 
harmony and and there would be a musical quality to that somehow that would be um just beautiful you know so that's the third plane and we we can develop that by do, doing things indicated by the keywords by appreciating people and ourselves and life and by giving and by giving attention by listening you know and focusing the attention in the heart you know when when you do that the tone of your voice changes and your facial expression changes as well and um, people pick up on that and they, they, they relax into that so that's the third plane in the book path to happiness i talk about this as being the the caring energy the first would be strength for no the second exploration for hello and this is caring the energy of care when we come to the fourth plane we move away from this soft sentimentality and and love deepens and becomes something of a foundation for a, an ability we have to take on that which is not loving in the world. So when we've learned what love is on the third plane, we, we, we notice that that makes us very vulnerable, rather naive, and, and we can be abused rather easily. And, and, and at some point, we recognize that however loving we may want to be, we're actually living in a certain world which isn't always loving. And so we, we want to look after the kids. You know, we feel a sense of justice and, and a bit of outrage that the, that the kids should have to grow up in a world that wasn't loving and, and, and injustice and, sorry, injustice and, and nastiness and, and we feel if we were truly truly loving we would sacrifice the the mood of, of beauty and joy and, and we would take on the bad guys and we would stand for principles and we would become heroic this is the heroic plane the fourth plane and and it's the plane of faith and justice and principle and truth and taking on the bad guys and being up for conflict and and being strong in your personal identity having a very robust ego so that you can affirm your faith when somebody tries to talk you down you say nope i'm certain that i'm right on this point and so it, it, it isn't soft it's quite mars-like energetically speaking if the third plane was Venus-like, this is much more like Mars. The military like to hang out on the fourth plane and, and um, take on the bad guys. And of course, the bad guys think that we're the bad guys, so they take on us. <laughs> Everybody thinks they're on the good guys' side, don't they? So the fourth plane takes us into an accelerated process of personal development. This is where we go through our process. This is where we face the truth of who we are. This is the plane of profound authenticity. And what we're trying to do is to become free of everything which is false. And that absolute freedom is eventually found in spiritual liberation. It is the understanding that we are in harm's way. And we mustn't let that stop us from being good people. You know, that's, that's what justice and principle is all about. Somebody strong in their principles holds to their goodness of being. They, they maintain a good sense of self-honoring despite the difficult circumstances. You can't get to that deepening of, of love without taking yourself into conflict. So some of these people can be quite combative. And each of us is born, they say, on one of these planes. So as the soul emerges out of undifferentiated spirit into some identity as soul self, it, it, it first comes through one of these planes. 
So each of us is born, shall we call it, on one of these planes. And um, we were all asked to guess which plane we were born on. And, and our, my Sufi teacher was willing to kind of say, yes, if you got it right. And I sort of tentative, tentatively offered him the possibility that I might have been on, born on the fourth plane. And he just laughed. <laughs> yes, he said, <laughs> you know. Um, so I'm one of these guys that goes out and looks for trouble and provokes people and, and you know. <laughs> now the fifth plane has to have that strength of being able to withstand provocation and stand up to the attacks that come when you proclaim. So the fifth plane energy is passing on the teachings that you've learned on the fourth plane. So it's a priestly energy. It's the energy of sacredness, the energy of vision, of visionary intentionality. So you mean to make a difference. You, 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 you project yourself into the world. And typically that aligns with um, naming what you find sacred. Now, that might be a religious ideal. It might be a mantra. It might be a prayer or the name of God. But a lot of people find sacredness very subjective, very personal. And whatever you find sacred needs to be expressed for it to be invoked, invoked, putting it in the voice. The fifth plane relates to the throat chakra. So you invoke reality here. You choose your reality and you do that in sacredness. It's called the plane of splendor. And in meditation, it's, it's glorious. It, it's, it's the energy of glory. There's a kind of death or glory associated with the fourth plane, but death is more likely than glory. On the fifth plane, the glory is not at any cost. You know, it's just glorious. You're in touch with the higher forms of angels here. Um, it is said that the cherubim are associated with the fifth plane. And the cherubim would represent a, an archangelic principle of glorification. The cherubim spend their whole eternal life singing the praises of God. So basically that's musicality. Um, we, we, we don't have it that often nowadays in our music. It's not absent, but it's not so present as once it was in the days of the classical composers. If you really listen to classical music, you, know, you, you, you kind of get that they're praying as they compose their music. It's just, it moves you into these inspired states of, of wanting to know God if you don't actually know that principle wanting to know universality of consciousness whatever you call that because of the music that they have and that's what's called cherubim energy it did you know that's kind of from religious teachings but the idea that there exists this universality of praise whether you apply that to the praise that you have for nature or goodness as a universal principle or whatever that energy that we have to, to speak to the quality of sacredness is our fifth plane reality. And it, it requires having been competent on the level of the hero and the heroine. You know, you have to fight, fight to maintain your place on the fourth plane. And then when you get onto the fifth plane, you, you don't want that. You don't want to have to fight any, any, anything. <laughs> it's, it's just in the way. And, and so there's that sense of just, having no need to do that you you exude an atmosphere which makes it very unlikely for anyone to have a go at you anymore who's ever you know it's very unusual for um a truly authentic inspired teacher of the highest spiritual principles to be um to be drawn into the murkiness that you would associate with business you know, I mean, those people that do that and, and proclaim themselves to be highly advanced spiritual beings, um, 
and also involved in business and so on is very you know we're very suspicious about whether they are spiritual beings or not you know i don't want to go too far into who i'm talking about here but there are some religious leaders that would make very good wall street uh, functionaries you know uh, i just can't i can't feel that i can't reconcile that myself or somebody tucked away and and and, and just praying all day or um gardening in a certain spiritual way and, and and just mentioning wisdom when he was asked the question or she was kind of asked to heal somebody or whatever it might be that that would also be fifth plane you know um and that takes us into an almost unworldly station those people that are sincere and genuinely doing this job well they tend not to be involved in too much of the goings on in the world so when we get to to want to learn how to be that way, very often we we, we go on retreat, you know, we, we go and speak to somebody who lives in a, a sacred way all the time, in a monastery or a retreat center or whatever it is nowadays. We we hang out with people that hang out with sacredness. That's our fifth plane experience. To move into the sixth plane is, is, is remarkably unlikely for most of us and most of the people we know. That would be unworldly. We would not want to engage with the world at all. You'd want somebody else to do your shopping for you. The thought of going into the supermarket would, would be terrible. You know, you, ooh, you couldn't, couldn't really do that unless it was the last thing at night and you were the only one in the shop it you'd be picking up on everyone's energy you know you you couldn't function in the world on the sixth plane you know the sixth plane is it is the highest plane of existence really it's, it's where you touch the realms of the transcendental you, you don't go there you just touch them and and it would be a, a person who would want to be absolutely pure they would be dis um dissatisfied with themselves because they don't have that purity of being you know they they would be fastidious they would be very particular about being perfectly clean absolutely clear-minded clear in the heart you know they'd want they want perfect and, and disappointed because they weren't and they want to meditate more and pray more to, to become perfect as people but if you actually were able to enter that plane on retreat it would be, and I mean, you know, you, you can touch it. it. It's it's perfection. You know, it's, it's a purity of of, of being. It, it's the highest form of awareness of self. And, and in fact, that's where humility is. If you ever get to touch humility, then it would be on the sixth plane. It, it's it's not a practice. It's not a decision. It's a state of being where you just don't want to get in the way by being anything or anyone you just want to forget yourself so that you can get the you know this this purity of god so that's the sixth plane and uh, we associate that in the seven word system with the word sorry um those people that can actually sum up a situation and realize they're at fault and they say sorry easily um they give you a clue as to the energy but there's a better story than that. There was this doctor who was given an impossible task. He was employed by, um, I think it was a mental institution in India with so many inmates, a thousand inmates or something, that he just didn't have any possibility of, of seeing them and helping them. And he was a genuine guy, a very highly spiritual person. And, and what he did was this. He, he got all of their files and just one by one, he would put their folder on his desk and he would ask for forgiveness. He would beg forgiveness of this client, this patient, um, and put it aside and then do another one. And he would just maintain that sixth plane concentration whilst focusing on individuals without ever meeting his patients, you know. And apparently it worked and then they, they, they started to get better. You know, that lovely idea, you know, you, you, you're responsible for somebody else's suffering in some way. That's a fascinating idea, you, you know, um, and it, it was, they, they tried to teach that in Christianity. It got distorted over the years, but 
Christ is associated with that energy of absolute forg forgiveness. You know, you forgive everyone everything, and it's, it's, it's your fault because it's in your world. If there's somebody suffering and you know about them, well, it's your world. You know, this is your your reality and there's someone suffering in it so it's your fault it's not that you're to blame but you are less than perfect so it's, it's a slight imperfection it's a fault in your your makeup so you apologize for that that's the thinking behind it very very high level of, of wisdom and concentration there so that's the sixth thing and the seventh is beyond that it's um unattainable except on retreat i would say and and in in, in in very very exceptional cases some individuals and they're not comfortable with it can can live in that state of transcendental reality they're they're psychotic by our standards but they're in the presence of the beloved all the time for us it's just um touching the in that state as you can observe in one of our number at the moment So we can't really model this state of being in the seven word system. It is unrealistic to even get anywhere near that. So we call it yes. It's just if you were in that transcendental state, you, you, you couldn't do anything else. You know, you just flow along with everything and, and just surrender to it all. <laughs> 